Today we're going to be working a particular scenario that's very, very common in tracking cases. And this is where a subject gets picked up uh, by a car uh, when they've fled from the police. And it's so common nowadays. First thing people do as soon as they start fleeing is get on the cell phone and they're looking for somebody to come pick them up. And <laughs> even oftentimes Uber will be there to pick a suspect up. But it is so common. It's a big part of tracking. And what's so important about it is that even though we may not pick the person up at the end of the track, we may not get them, uh, sometimes investigative methods can turn the tide and we can figure out who the suspect is simply based on a witness statement, perhaps video, so on and so forth. And so it's very important that we know with some you know, good consistency where that pickup may have taken place. And the way we know is by learning how to read the dog's body language. And that's what this scenario is all about, learning where the, the subject might have been picked up by the vehicle, uh, and then seeing how close we can actually narrow it down. Uh, once we know that information, we can start doing some knock and talks, checking in the area for witness statements, uh, or perhaps finding a video camera set up somewhere. And this information can be very helpful when it comes to solving the case through investigative methods uh, when the dog track didn't quite pan out. This area has a lot of dog traffic going back and forth and also human traffic going to and from the Target uh, store, which is directly behind us. And sometimes it takes a little while for the dog to get through some of these cross tracks. Now, right here, Super tells us almost exactly where the subject crossed the road, but follows the blown odor down a little bit before she decides to make her crossing. And this is her crossing, but it's not exactly right where the track was. Good girl. Get your lead up behind you. There you go. I would just go across because they're not moving. You got a red light. There you go. There you go. Nice little step on point. On the dog's behavior, this is exactly where the step on point is after the road cr crossing of our subject. And it actually lines up very well with where she indicated earlier before she crossed the road. When trying to determine exactly where the car pickup pl took place, it's very important that we know what our trailing tracking body language is and that the dog is consistent in that behavior because one of the things that we're looking for is the change in consistency. And if you watch Super working here and look at her tail set, it's relatively up, relatively pointed, good consistent direction of travel with the same amount of pull. Her nose is relatively low, but does pop up from time to time. So this is consistent tracking trailing behavior that we're looking for, saying that the dog is on the subject that we're looking for. Now, the change that takes place has to be big enough that we know something occurred in that location. And what we just saw here was just a little bit of distraction behavior, probably from a dog um, or something like that. So what we did in this situation is once the trail air had laid the trail, they found a location that uh, nobody was aware of and sat there for several minutes until uh, he was picked up and then moved to a new location at least a half a mile away. The reason why it's a half a mile away is we want to make sure that the dog can't air scent the vehicle from a distance because sometimes that can happen. If it's only a couple hundred yards away, it's very easy for the dog to detect the trail or the, the trail air from a distance. So we want to move them a good distance. Once the handler determines where the car pickup place is located at, then what we're going to do is have our subjects drive back to exactly where they parked and where the subject of the trail was picked up. And beginning here, we start having some changes, some inconsistencies. Number one, the head really goes up. It appears that she's air scenting something from a distance, a quid, quick sudden surge of speed, and then detailing of this manhole cover. This manhole cover is very important because later our trail air told us this is exactly where he was sitting when he was waiting for his pickup. 
Now watch Super's behavior here. You know, she's following some odor, but it's no longer consistent. She goes out in the road over here, rushes out into the road over here, um, and we've got a lot of circling behavior, but no longer any consistent track. So it's very important at this point that we just don't follow blindly because what's happening now is the dog's gone into hunting mode. She's looking for the odor in other places. Um, and actually, she seems to detect a location right here on the other side of the road, uh, but we had to stop due to traffic. So at this point, our handler calls the location. He's saying more than likely this is where the car pickup was and we're going to have our trail air come back. Doesn't seem like there's any trail over there, does it? That's leave distraction. That yeah, leave that. Leave, leave it. it. Leave it. Leave it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's come on back over here. Now we're going to add in a little twist to the trail. We have the subject in the vehicle as well as the driver. We're going to have them park exactly where the car pickup took place. And then we're going to cut the dog loose and see how they react to these two people. Does the dog actually go directly to the person that laid the trail? Or is the dog going to be more interested in the driver? She was trying to cross right over to that island, remember? I was thinking I wanted to detail that island. Yeah, and if that car didn't come by and it didn't stop you, she would have done it. Well, I had enough, on, I was short enough on her, she wasn't getting past the bus lane. Okay, whenever you're ready. Yeah, okay, now stop driving. You're good, no car. So Supra goes to the downwind side of both people to get an air scent, and then goes directly to what she believes is source. And this is our correct trail error right here. So that was really cool to watch, and uh, obviously the dog knew exactly what uh, she was looking for, but the question is, is this something that we should do in the field on real cases? And frankly, I don't think so, especially if a subject is brought back to the location uh, with a police officer or multiple police officers, because then we're dealing with fear scent of the subject, and sometimes that can be very overriding to the dog. So regardless of the matching odor, if it's matching or not, sometimes our dogs are just attracted to that fear scent. And so I don't think field lineups like this are really a good idea for real practice on real deployment. But for training purposes, it's quite interesting, and it's uh, indicative of sometimes our scent discriminating ability from our canines.